Hello everyone, my name is Tyler. I'm a medic in the United States Army. I work in the emergency room in Madigan and I often do ride-alongs with our emergency medical services group. And today I'm going to be talking about the importance of proper lifting techniques and work-related back injury prevention. Every year more than 6,000 emergency medical service workers are injured on the job. This is due to improper lifting, overexertion, awkward body posture, and repetitive movements. Data from the International Association of Firefighters shows that nearly 50% of early retirements are due to lower back injury. EMS has some of the best patient handling technology available. Uh, we have power stretchers, so those are stretchers that are hydraulically powered so they raise and lower the patients for you at the press of a button um, we have loading systems so on those power stretchers as soon as you push them into the back of the ambulance the legs automatically collapse there's no lifting involved um, we have specific lists or lifts sorry those are uh, mobile lifts all you do there are very thick maybe six inches wide straps that you would feed underneath the patient. And then that lift will, will lift the patient for you. Uh, we have sliding boards. So we like to call those roller boards. So if you can roll the patient onto their side and get these roller boards underneath them, um, it makes moving them from one bed to another a lot easier. Unfortunately, sometimes those don't get used, whether they're just not available they're not functioning or due to laziness, honestly. Um, I'm unfortunately one of those 6,000. Earlier this year, I was helping move an overweight patient from one bed to another. The others in the room, being shorter than me, couldn't reach the bed, so we had to lower the bed to a height that would accommodate them as well. Uh, doing this caused me to have to in order to be the correct height, bend my back, and it put my back in an awkward position. Then the person at the head of the bed started three, two, one, move. And as soon as we moved that patient, I, I felt just excruciating pain in my back. I thought it was something that would go away though. You know, I kept stretching throughout the rest of my shift. I continued my shift, that was the end of it or so I thought. The next morning, uh, I couldn't even roll over to get out of bed. Um, I was out of work for weeks. I had to, I couldn't, I couldn't move. My wife had to take care of me. I was like a baby. Um, after several doctor's appointments, countless x-rays and roughly two weeks of therapy, physical therapy, teaching me proper stretches and proper form and stuff like that, uh, I was finally able to return to work. Now, as I said earlier, I'm in the army, so I still got paid while I was unable to work, and I had to pay nothing for the medical services I received. Um, some people aren't that lucky. You know, it's not the case for them. Some of them, even though they have medical insurance, they still have to pay a copay. They have to pay some kind of fee out of pocket. It's never free. Um, others, they're the sole providers of their families and they're forced to work through the pain. That is extremely unfair for us to rely so heavily on EMS and EMTs and paramedics. And there's not a good enough system whenever they get hurt helping us. Uh, luckily, there are several ways to reduce the work-related injuries, including reducing the load, using the equipment properly, and mastering the proper form. In order to reduce the load, uh, get more people involved. Normally, we work in teams of two or three. There's no reason that one person should be responsible for lifting the patient. Um, get your partner to help you. If you and your partner are still unable to lift the patient, 
like I said, we have lifts. You can use that. Use the equipment to your advantage. Sometimes we don't use the equipment because it's easier for us to risk injury. It's faster. It's more time efficient. And sometimes it's easier to just do the job yourself. Um, or you don't want to embarrass the patient. A lot of times, that's a very large factor. Sorry. Uh, for myself, I personally don't care about embarrassing the patient. If it's going to make my life easier, I'm going to do it. Also, some hospitals are taking it a step further and making their facilities no lifting environments, meaning you will not lift the patient. They have equipment there specifically for you, such as lifts mounted to ceilings. Um, again, they use those straps that go underneath the patient and they kind of work like a crane. Uh, and then finally, learn the proper form. A lot of people think oh, I'm too strong. You know, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the form. I'm never going to get hurt. That's not true. I can promise you because I thought the same thing. I thought I was never going to get hurt. My form didn't matter. And it does. You shouldn't be willing to injure yourself because you're lazy or because you think you're too good. Um, we have the tools to prevent work-related back injuries. It's just a matter of implementing them. Thank you.